Alright, I'm back in Pingo, Bucara, Ecuador. This time uh, I'm here to work on a lightning protection system for our water tank. So I've got some Ground rod comes down into the earth. We're bearing it on average between 10 to 18 inches here in the ground pit. We've done a, we've done a ring that runs uh, around the tank. Also, we've uh, got our split bolts and uh, no locks. Um, electrical grease kind of holding this together. And so we've got uh, a split bolt for every radial. Split bolt for every radial line we run out away in our grounding system. And we just, we just terminated our, our ground radials with a uh, just a rock just to hold that line down. Like a trench around the tank. Yeah, a split bolt. It's very windy up here. It's another copper ground line with the radial. It's another copper ground uh, radial. Our lightning rod that'll be terminated with a uh, little uh, Corona ring, and we're going to also use this. We're going to uh, salt the uh, salt the trench with this grounding salt when we, when we bury. The Out of the tank and the ground grounding trenches, and you can see see how fast the clouds are moving today. So it's a pretty windy day here in Tingo. What we're doing with this uh, grounding cable is we're adding we're adding salt to the dirt to make it more conductive. And then after we add this, the salt, we're just filling the trench. So the lightning protection system is complete. The grounding lines have been buried with the salt. The final touch is our rebar force lightning rod. The copper lines come up and this stranded copper has been unspooled to form um, points for corona discharge to mitigate any future lightning strikes. Got a little trout farm action here. Walk through. Some excess water from the spring to feed the trout farm. Got the pump house over there. It's pretty.
pretty nice setup. Got the cave of the Incas over there. Alright, this is the Kiloa water source that we're using here in Tingo Pukara. Oh, kind of feeds this swampy marshy area here. And we take the excess water, it comes from the spring, and we move it over to this pump house. And we pump that water up to the community. So underneath this is really the spring. They did a little concrete on top just to protect protect the water source. You can see even a little extra water is coming out of the hillside here. And this tube can be used to add chlorine tablets to help keep the water nice and bacteria free for the community. Power comes in through this transformer here. Comes in through the utility meter. And the utility meter is equipped with a 50 amp circuit breaker. And then go in to the pump house. Power comes into the breaker panel for the pump house. This will go to the pump control panel, we'll look at it in a second. This breaker here controls the lights for the pump house. This breaker would turn the power to the pump control system on and off. This is the pump controls, this is the, the Tablero. It's equipped with, um, this is the, the uh, storage tank that you saw in other videos at the top of the, the mountain in the community. It's indicating that it's full. This is um, just a normal operation. This will be on when the pump is on, and this will uh, alarm if there's any issue with the pump. This is an hours meter, so this indicates the, uh, the run time of the pump. This also has a ampere meter to indicate the power that's being drawn by the pump for the uh, current drawn by the pump. Right now the pump is off so there's no current and this is a volt meter that indicates the amount of voltage at the pump and uh, we have 240 volts AC at this pump house. The knob allows us to turn the pump on, off and the auto allows for the float switches to control the pump's operation. So this split switch is at the main tank, which is currently full, and this is to the pump tank, which we'll have a look at right now. The pump is in here, and it's a little too dark to see it, but there's a pump and a float switch in there. As we come down, this is the pump's um, control box. It houses the motor start capacitors and a starter relay. And this line goes down into the, the pump well and powers our uh, 5 horsepower Franklin electric pump. And this indicates the water pressure on the pump line. So this, this pump line uh, travels almost uh, a mile and it's also um, high pressure and travels about 700 to 1,000 vertical feet. When this pump is on, you'll see the pressure go up to about 450. So what I'm doing is installing two 
metal oxide varistors. They're each 300 volt rated and they're going to go across the 24 volt AC supply that feeds the uh, float tank switch. And there had been some uh, lightning strikes at the float tank that had sent a voltage surge down to uh, down this line, down the, the uh, float switch control line into this box and it had tripped some of these breaker panels. So what I have here again is two metal oxide varistors that are going to go to the uh, AC Alright, so I've installed these two metal oxide varistors to the, uh, the inline from the uh, float tank switch. Right, so that will protect the incoming lines from any type of voltage spikes they might encounter at the tank which is at the top of this mountain and the other side of the metal oxide varistors have been attached to a little um, exposed piece of the ground line I cut that little exposure and then the leads of the metal oxide varistors are wound around that and that ground line is the system ground right here so so that is the lightning protection addition that we added on this trip. Also, so both the supply tank in the community is currently full and we emptied the, the pump tank for some servicing. And you can see that light is on indicating that it is, is operational. When, it's, when, the float, when the pump tank is full, this light will turn off. We're leaving this instructional manual with the pumping system and we're located just right here on top of the the Bolero where it's easy to find if anyone needs to reference it. When in, within these pipes at the bottom of these uh, tubes are valves that will respectively empty the pump tank and the sedimentation tank of the pump house. So these valves are located just uh, 15 feet south of the pump house and we're adding caps to prevent any dirt and debris from going into the, the piping and jamming the valves that are located in the bottom of the pipe. This valve was added to allow um, the, the incoming water source, which comes from the spring, to bypass the sedimentation tank so we can open this and let the water out and drain the tank uh, when we're going to service it. So this is another look at the outside of the pump house here. we're going to examine where the water comes in. And look around and there's where the water would come in. Currently we have the water turned off for servicing. And this tank allows for sediments that are in the water to accumulate. Although it's very clean water, um, some some dirt deposits can accumulate in the tank. Another addition that we made during this trip was we routed the, in, the incoming water comes to this tube and comes to the other side of this sedimentation tank and the water will flow around this concrete barrier it will allow for the particulates to drop out of the water supply and as this fills it will um, overflow into the pump tank within the pump house. And that is uh, 
uh, completion of the upgrades to the uh, water pumping system for Tingo Pukara.